Hey everyone, it's Clarice. Today's topic is going to be dirty things that you find in Germany. And I don't mean the porn. So if you're interested, keep on watching. So everyone, how is your weekend? I'm filming this on a Monday. Um, the weather is looking pretty awful this week. It's going to be raining. Um, the heat wave seems to be over, thank goodness. But I wish there was more sun. It's the beginning of August and it feels like time is just flying by. The summer has just been so fast and I know we've got a good month and a half left of summer but uh, I feel like I haven't gone, much, gone out as much as I could have. Um, yeah, so today's topic is uh, dirty things that you find in Germany and um, it's not really a clickbait, but um, let me explain a few things. Now, radioactivity. Um, this is a result of the Chernobyl accident in 1986, and there are still um, radioactive particles that are affecting um, parts of Europe, and particularly in southern Germany. And um, what is most concerning is the cesium-137. Um, this is still in the soil in some parts of Germany and depending on um, the type of soil and how deep the um, particles uh, penetrated, um, you cannot eat mushrooms in certain areas. Or you can, but you should um, take your mushrooms that you pick and you have to go to a sort of a, a inspector of mushrooms that will tell you if it's safe to eat or not. Um, it's not recommended to sell mushrooms actually. I think it's against the law if there's a certain amount of uh, becquerels that, uh, that they measure in the radioactivity. Um, and as a result of not eating the mushrooms, um, you cannot um, eat certain game, for example wild boar, because they eat these mushrooms and it accumulates in their body. So like I said before, this is particularly an issue in um, southern Germany and particularly in Bayern, um, which is where Munich is, this region. So I found this pretty interesting because as I grew up I wasn't really affected being in um, Canada, not really worrying about um, radiation or nuclear fallout was in Germany this is an issue and it's a very real issue that still persists today. So a lighter topic but it's still a pretty um, big issue is um, cigarette butt waste. Um, I feel like in Germany there's a lot more smokers here than in Canada. Um, and people walk on the street and they smoke, they're in their cars and they smoke and toss out their cigarette butts off the side of their car. Um, you see it sometimes uh, in certain parts of the cities that um, there's cigarette butts everywhere um, and it's really gross. Um, it's actually a big issue because one third of the trash or the litter in Germany are cigarette butts. And if you walk on the platforms and the train stations, you see people like throwing cigarette butts everywhere. I mean, it's gotten a lot better, don't get me wrong. And um, when people uh, make, tell stories about the old days, like 20, 30 years ago when they're smoking, it seems that people were smoking a way more than now. So I guess I'm pretty lucky in this respect, but I'm even luckier that in Canada there are more, uh, I think there are more laws that um, promote um, promote kids not to smoke. Um, yeah, so they're trying to fight this with um, fines in the cities. Um, I think they're even increasing the fines now if you get caught with um, littering with cigarette butts, but yeah. Um, there are actually initiatives also within different cities to pick up uh, cigarette butts and si pick up this sort of litter as a volunteer work. So I think it's pretty good, but still, um, that's one annoyance I have in Germany that like a lot of people smoke and just, and 
like in Japan, I think the people get encouraged to like um, store their cigarette butts in their own sort of containers um, so, that, so they can take this trash home with them or they can empty it somewhere else. But here you don't see it. People are just smoking everywhere. And as a new mom, I find this particularly concerning because if, I, if you see um, cigarette butt litter in the parks, um, it's really easy for kids to just uh, crawl up and reach over and grab it and then get poisoned with the nicotine and other uh, carcinogens in the cigarettes. The next topic is public urination and um, I have been really surprised sometimes like I was walking in downtown in broad daylight and there were people, there was this man pissing in the corner of the street and he didn't care at all. Um, I've seen a few instances where people are just standing with no shame and just peeing their happy way. Um, I thought this was maybe me like in Canada no one really does this unless they're like super drunk at a party or at the club um, but actually I've uh, seen a few news articles where um, actually public urination is an issue so for example in Ulm which is a city of, uh, pretty close to Stuttgart um, their cathedral is under a threat because of public urination. So the Ulm Minster, which is actually the tallest church in the world, um, with a spire at a hundred and I think over 160 meters, um, they've noticed that um, their foundation is being eroded away because of all the people urinating and vomiting on it. I saw this news article a few years ago and it seems like the only thing they're trying to do right now is to give a public fine if they catch anyone. But yeah, it's really sad that yes, yeah, such a famous church is going, yeah, because of all the peeing, it's um, disintegrating. Yeah. Another really funny article I actually found this year and I really laughed when I read this because um, it happened a few months ago in Berlin and it's um, in Berlin there's a lot of bridges and um, if you're a tourist there you can go on a boat and then you get a tour of uh, all the bridges in Berlin and it seems that a, a guy was urinating off a bridge and then it landed directly on the tourists on a boat and the tourists were like whoa and they're standing up and then they hit their heads on the bridge and a few got injured. Um, I think it was like, yeah, I think it was like four people had to get treated because of the hitting their head. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think that was like their welcome to Berlin uh, moment. But yeah, I'm not kidding. Um, I see way more people urinating in public than anywhere else. Uh, tell me if that's the case for you, if you find that as well. Um, yeah. And last but not least is a topic which is uh, really, uh, how do I say, in German it would be a feminist theme or something that is really um, a hot topic in Stuttgart, which to me personally, I don't think it's a huge issue because there are many other parts of the world which are um, way more polluted than here and I don't find it so bad. But um, yeah, so there is something called a Feinstaub alarm in Stuttgart, which means that if they're measuring the particulates and the smog and if this goes over a certain limit, there's a huge... Um, alarm raised and the city is trying to do all these things to fight against this smog. Um, what's particularly dangerous about this Feinstaub or the smog is um, that it irritates the lungs and triggers asthma attacks in people. Um, yeah, and because Stuttgart is topographically, topo topographically um, low situated in like valleys, the air doesn't get very, um, it doesn't get circulated very well. So all the smog gets trapped in this valley. 
So another word for Feinstaub is particulate matter 10, which means um, particulate matter which is maybe a hundred thousandth of a meter. And this um, comes from emissions from the car, it comes from emissions from chimneys, and just general dust from the city. Now what the city is doing to improve this uh, situation is that during certain times of the year um, they will have discounts on um, public transportation to discourage people from driving with their cars. Um, also, they're trying to promote car sharing and other stuff like that. The most dramatic changes they did to fight against the smog is actually to ban um, all cars in the city that don't meet a certain requirement. So, for example, diesel cars are not allowed anymore within the city limits unless uh, you want to face a fine. So, there you go, four things that are dirty in Germany. I hope you enjoyed this one and give me a like and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!